Let's go over the deal that we got today. I don't know if you guys got a chance to see this one. Yeah. Um, this is one of their f- five multi-million dollar deals in two weeks. Palantir and Integrity Mold and Tool, a gold pioneer in the tool and mold industry, today announced a partnership to deploy Palantir, uh, Foundry across their business functions. Multi-year million dollar deal will help optimize Integrity's operations from the factory to product design, scheduling, engineering, all these different things that Foundry can be useful for. CEO says, thanks to our talented and hardworking team, we extracted all the potential out of our current system, but we wanted a more advanced data platform to reach our full potential. What were your guys' thoughts on this Super deal? Excited. Super excited. Dom, why, you got it. why is this so important? Um, this is important because uh, this is a mid-market customer uh ranges from i've seen they did 63 million dollars in revenue to 100 annually somewhere in there they're projecting 230 million next year um go check out their website it's a very basic website very you know um true to the industry and manufacturing and um but they're starting to show their value at a mid-market level with customers that this is a big deal for them to spend millions of dollars on a software platform. Um, and this is definitely a illustration of the power of their supply chain management software and foundry. Uh, if you look at the, the press release, I mean, this is ultimately going to be their full supply chain from beginning to end. They're basing everything off of foundry um and in hopes of having faster time to value than their competition and being able to deliver parts faster to their customers so the fact that a company of this size um is spending millions of dollars with them and you can already check uh integrity.palantirfoundry.com it's already live i already checked that out um just really encouraging to see a company of that size when we start seeing more and more of these kind of instances happening Okay, Matt, your thoughts on this deal? Uh, I forget who it was. Somebody posted this deal or Arnie. the deal that happened a couple of days ago. Was it Arnie? Mm-hmm. And I said, you know, it doesn't really matter. Where's the trillion dollar contracts? Why? Why are we still dealing with <laughs> these million dollar contracts? No, I think I agree with you 100, percent Tom. I think that this just goes to show that it's not just a big boys game where I think a lot of people think it is, where it's the the Apaches of the world. I mean, you're now getting into the smaller sort of less than $5 billion company sort of market caps. And I think that that's going to truly open up a lot of customers for the future. And I think I'm just really curious now that like, we're kind of thinking about this and, and shrinking the size of the average company that's kind of getting involved with Palantir, where is the cutoff point? Right. Cause I think a lot of people are like, Oh, Snowflake, they can reach these small customers and, so my question is now is, you know, Palantir has really gone after the big guys and is more for the bigger contracts and less less contracts, but bigger contracts um, or less customers, bigger contracts. But I'm curious, like, is it a billion dollar market cap, two billion dollar market cap, five hundred million dollar market cap? Like, where is that cutoff where Palantir can truly play? Because I think a lot of people were saying, well, Snowflake gets all the smaller customers where Palantir is going after the big boys. And to me, this is just kind of showing that that's not necessarily the case. And so it got me a little amped up. I was pretty fired up, but I was joking around saying it's not a trillion dollars. But I think a lot of a lot of hate goes out there to be like, oh, it's not a lot, but you only need, you know, 10, 15 of these in a couple of months. And next thing you know, I mean, you're generating another hundred million dollars in revenue a year. Um Anyway, I think that these these small wins and they're happening every single week. Like it seems like every other day you're seeing something else, and um, it's just another step in in the long term foundational pivot to where I think this thing's going to go exponential at some point. I think the big difference that you look at their software is that people are building their business on it. Right, this is an operating system, and the likelihood of them churning out of Foundry once they get all that data put in is very little. That's why you see companies like MongoDB and uh, Oracle still to this day. You know, once you get your business fully functioning off of something like that, it is high stakes to high switching costs. Um, and then we also know that. They're continuing to develop new things and expand into 
other opportunities with Apollo and modularizing things. Um, I really think it was real interesting the deal before this one with the partnership with Crisis 24. Um, we got to talk about that one. We got to talk about that one. After. A yeah. lot of people didn't talk about who the parent company is. We can talk about that later. But um, yeah, like you said, there's just deals popping off left and right. What are your thoughts, Steve? So St Steve, uh, but before you go, here's the chart you wanted me to show. And okay. you, you increased your position. You told me last Friday, I was actually at a halal guys when I got your text message and you were Love like, halal more. guys. Sorry. What do you usually get, Matt? You get a beef platter, your beef and chicken. Oh yeah. And, and, and five lines of the hot sauce too. They're, they're always like, are you sure you want five lines? I'm like, give me the five lines, my guy. I can handle it. We're good. Okay. All right. That's good. That's good. Um, and, 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 uh, Steve texts me and he's like, I'm buying more pound here and I'm in line. And I'm like, why? He's like, cause they're everywhere. So what are your thoughts, Steve, on this deal? And then we can go through this chart as well. Yeah. So I was very busy the past two days. I did not see this deal from today. So I'm not going to talk about it because I haven't read it yet. I only know what you guys just said, but the crisis 24 one, that's the uh, compliance one. Am I correct? Yeah. Yep. Security. Okay. Yeah. yeah the that's risk management one. Risk yeah. management. Huge. Absolutely huge. And they are doing what they do with Skywise and Airbus. They are going to replicate it. They now are going to have a platform for EV infrastructure, insurance, semiconductors, cancer research, airlines, and risk compliance. I mean, these are going to be platforms that can be cross-sold down the value chain through these companies, and Palantir will generate revenue from it. And it goes back to the slide. If anybody from Palantir can get this to be in the quarterly reports instead of the CEO letter, I think it would be a great thing because it truly tells a story about the cohort and the customer count and the black margin there is what you really want to focus on because that is their net new customers year over year. And it is growing tremendously. And like everybody said, they are growing, they're getting more deals and they're still a company that not everybody knows about. You look at where they were when they first hit the market, people who knew about them thought they were strictly a black box company. All they did was privatize security with the government, CIA, DOD. It's not the case. And it's being proven in these numbers with these huge jumps in their customer accounts. And it's tremendous. And I added, so I was very angry <laughs> for a while with Palantir. And I said I was going to give him four quarters. The clock is still ticking, but I am back to being bullish instead of neutral because of Carp changing his tone and the interviews he's giving. And I think the deals that they are making are very strong and it solidifies my investment thesis. And you can talk about valuation all day long and Palantir could go to four or five dollars. You know, I don't think anybody should be under a disillusion that it's it, it has to go back up because it certainly doesn't. It could go down further. Nobody can predict where this market's going to go. And from a long term investment, this is a company with zero dollars in debt. Rising rates don't matter. Not one bit. I have $2.3 billion in cash. They are utilizing stock-based compensation to incentivize and grow the company. They're not taking on debt. So take SBC for what it is. But if you're a five or a 10 year out and Palantir keeps going at this rate, I mean, they're free cash flow positive. It's hard to see them not doing big things. Yeah, I would tend to agree. I mean, like the, the amount of deals we've seen, and we'll talk about crisis in a second, but you had CDC, then you had Lockheed Martin, then you had Tampa Bay General, then you had the new deal we had today, 
Then you had Crisis 24. I, I think, Dom, your point about these, uh, at least some of these being, like Tampa Bay Hospital is not a Fortune 500 company, right? I doubt they're producing as much revenue. So then making these strategic partnerships and deals with companies and organizations that are rather small in the grand scheme of things, their average client per year is paying them, I think, 5.5 to $7 million. And it's like, if they could get that down, it's like 500,000. We could see the scale of it, you know, begin to explode. Um, the question is just what is their go to market and are they prepared to have that much scale if they get there? So let's talk about the risk management part of this. Um, I guess, John, we'll start off with you, their parent company. You thought that was a big deal. The yeah. Part yeah. Of so it, it's, it's almost like crisis 24 is a, not necessarily a proof of concept, but if it goes and how they are anticipating with the partnership, but I'm sure they've been working together before they're just formalizing the partnership and expanding what they're doing, um, uh, just I'll read it verbatim here. Uh, they are a subsidiary under Garter World, which overall is a services uh, and security company. And it says here, uh, Garter World is a global champion in security services, integrated risk management and cash solutions, employing more than 120,000 highly skilled and dedicated professionals. Um, this could impact a lot more industries. And it talks about later at the bottom about Garden World, uh, Garter World, that they have a lot of Fortune 500 corporations and governments they work with. So if they can, you know, uh, it talks er later earlier in the, the article about how they want to ensure getting better resilience and faster business outcomes for Crisis 24, based off of using Foundry and using that, that operating system to, to get real-time data. Um, and that's obviously going to drive revenue and stronger partnerships and, and, and then kind of going together joint partnerships to sell their platform together with customers. But I, I'm looking at the bigger picture of how it, if they get into the, the parent company, this is a much bigger deal than what, you know, even crisis 24 is. And they're starting to do things in cybersecurity as well. If you guys look at their uh, Palantir blogs, their most recent engineering blog on protecting containers and Kubernetes, um, they actually have a competing product to what VMware has. So I can't say too much, <laughs> but uh, I was shocked to see that they're coming into my realm of work of, of actual endpoint and uh, uh container security for infrastructure and for IT teams. And, and I was wondering if they were going to get into that. And so it's really intriguing. So they're, they're tapping into, they're really trying to hone in on marketplaces and, and industries and then let the referencing go, let the Tesla effect happen, right? When people buy a Tesla, they're the marketing, they're the marketing tool, right? It's not commercials, dealerships, anything else. It's the same thing with you see with CISOs and IT directors. And, you know, I'm sure that Tyson's video uh, impacted a lot of people on LinkedIn. I mean, I had tons of hits. Um, and so when you have someone saying, hey, I spent 10 million, but I got 200 million in back in return. A, that guy's getting promoted and he looks pretty good. But B, people are going to be reaching out and saying, tell me more about what this was like for you. Especially in this type of economic environment. Exactly. 